Hi, my name is Stephen McNutt, and uh, this is going to be a quick video about the Diffie-Hellman calculation, what it's for, and and the, the basic calculation, and then a, a simpler calculation that's not cryptographically secure or anything, but it's easier to remember, so you can help to helps to retain the basic principle. So we're, I'm calling this Diffie-Hellman for people who suck at math, which would be me. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with a scenario to help give us some context for our discussion. So what we have here is we have Bubba, who is the owner of Bubba's Ice Cream. And Bubba has contracted with Alice Labs to refine his super awesome ice cream recipe and make it better than ever. Eve works for a competitor, and she would very much like to intercept the recipe and get the secret recipe so that her ice cream store can make those awesome ice cream too. So Alice and Bubba are meeting in a public place with a bunch of other people and they've never actually met each other in person. In order to authenticate each other so that Bubba can be certain he's talking to Alice and uh, Alice can be certain she's talking to Bubba and that they can you know safely exchange this recipe without it being intercepted or modified or you know Eve getting a hold of it or anything like that so the problem is is they can't just come into a public place and start shouting out their password they've got to find a way to exchange this password this one two three four this pre-shared key in a manner that it doesn't become compromised in the in the process of using it so that's where Diffie-Hellman comes in. Diffie-Hellman is going to allow them to be in a public space like a coffee shop where there can be no presumption of privacy, yet it's going to allow them to exchange this key without the possibility of it being compromised, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and look at the calculation. Okay, so I'm using the example straight out of Wikipedia that way you can go back you can go back and look at the article and the numbers will be exactly the same which should be helpful I also included another link where somebody had like a web-based calculator so you can play with it and calculate the different values and I found that kind of helpful and then, so we're gonna do this and then once I've done the the classic calculation using very obviously these are very small numbers uh, a computer you would use really large values but uh, we're <laughs> We're not computers. Uh, I'm going to actually do a, a, another calculation using basic addition and subtraction, which is not secure at all. But what it does do is that it conveys the basic principle of what's happening in a way that's much easier for people that suck at math to retain. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, step through this really fast. What we have is there's two values called P and G. G stands for generator. I believe P stands for prime. And the generator is the a primitive root of a P, which is a modulus. And then these two values are trans they're shared. So both sides they agree on what these two values are going to be and those are out in the open. And then there's a third value which is a private value that each side comes up with. They're going to use these three values to generate a an output and they're going to transmit that output so that's this calculation here and then this calculation here is where they're going to take the what they receive from the other person and they're going to run this calculation and what should happen is, is at the end of this calculation they should both have the same number that value then becomes the shared key that they can use to encrypt the password the pre-shared key that they already have so that way nobody can find out what the pre-shared key is so let's let's do the calculation. So in our case, Alice has chosen six, and we've chosen twenty-three and five for our modulus in our generator. So let's go ahead and put those in. Okay. So Alice has six. So this is our this is our first one. So we're going to do 5 to the power of 6, 5 to the power of 6 equals, and then our modulus is 25, so we do modulus, or 23, modulus 23, 
gives us a value of 8. So Alice is going to transmit a value of 8 to Bubba. So Bubba's going to run his calculation. So Bubba's calculation is going to be 5 to the power of 15. Modulus 23, 19. So he is going to transmit a value of 19 to our friend Alice. And so Alice is now going to take 19 as an input to this right here. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. So we're going to do 19 to the power of 6 modulus 23 2 okay. and let's run the same calculation for Bubba so Bubba is going to take 8 to the power of 15 modulus 23 So they both perform the calculations, and now they have a shared secret of two. So now, now they can take that and use it as an input to any hashing or encryption functions for any further data they want to exchange, and it would be impossible for anybody else to see the information. And that's, that's in a nutshell, how Diffie-Hellman works. So let's back up now, and let's do, <laughs> let's do this my way, which is addition and subtraction. Let's get this back to grade school level. So instead of all that fancy stuff, we're just going to go ahead and do a value. Let's, let's do a, a, sh, a public value of 5. So they're both going to say, guess what? We're going to use 5. We're just going to both say, listen, our, our second factor is 5. And then we've got, our, we've got our secret number. So let's just sum up, let's just sum up real fast. 6 and 5 is 11. And 5 and 15 is 20. So we'll just pop those in real fast. Okay, so these are the these are the calculated values and let's do it the other way around. So we're going to we're going to we're going to say that Bubba calculated a value of 20 which he then transmitted to Alice. Right? Alice calculated a value of 11 which she transmitted to Bubba. So then what's going to happen is, or what we're going to do is, we're going to take this 20 and we're going to subtract the known value, in which case is 5, and that leaves us with 15. And on this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract the value we know, which leaves us with 6. So now what's happened is, as you can see, we know what the other person's private key is, just through like some basic arithmetic. So, so if we added up our, our private key with the private key we figured out from the other guy, we now have a shared password of 21. Obviously it's not secure, but it does show you the, the basic operating principle without the fancy math. So there you go. That's Diffie-Hellman for people who suck at math. I hope this was helpful for you. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Have a good one.